In today's video, I want to talk to you about word association deception. Let's talk about it. to the most high Yah Shalom. Thank you for tuning in to another Righteous Spiritful episode. Today I'm back at it in them trenches handling that kingdom business. Man, in today's video, we're talking about word association deception. You know, when the Bible, you know, the basic instructions before leaving earth states that the penmanship of the scribes is in vain, most people do not study to show themselves approved or have the spirit of understanding to be able to recognize where the penmanship is in vain, where the insertion is. How did the scribes craftively, you know, uh, insert stuff into the book? Because the Romans and the Greeks got a hold of sacred text. They started translating it, putting their, putting you know, uh, a Hebraic Semitic text in to Greek. And then I've done videos on it before, 15 to 20% is lost in translation. And they're gonna make sure that you lose uh, a lot more than that due to the penmanship of the scribes being in vain. Here's one. Man, if you ask somebody that keeps Christian observances about Easter, chances are they're gonna take you to the book of Acts and they're gonna show you a, a passage that has the word Easter in there. And that is the only uh, mistranslation in the book. And when we look at the etymology of the word Easter, it's Passover, it's Pesach. And everywhere else in the book, it's referred to as Passover. Okay, here's another one. You'd be surprised, man, you have people that uh, think that Yahushua HaMashiach, who they call Jesus Christ, created a religion called Christianity. And he didn't. You can't find any text out there that says that. And the people that called them, uh, you know, anointed or Christians in Antioch, these were not righteous people. These were outsiders launching that on them, okay? When you think about Christmas, you need to go do some deep etymology behind uh, Jesus. You need to do some deep etymology behind and deep research behind Christ. That's gonna lead you to Christos. And by the Romans and the Greek changing these names, man, they can get you to follow their replacement theology concept. You know, they can get you to follow all of these holidays that's nowhere in the book you know nowhere do we see the way that people are keeping them today some of them are not even in the book and then if they're saying it's a biblical holiday they don't keep it the way the book says you got to think about the, the the passover and feast of unleavened bread how you're supposed to keep that seven days you're supposed to eat unleavened bread you're supposed to cleanse you know the leaven out of your life and in the word, it tells us to beware of the leaven of the Pharisees. And then Messiah, Yahushua HaMashiach, warns the Pharisees, he says, I'm not talking about bread that you eat. I'm talking about their doctrine. And this is why when you look at, uh, you know, religious people that say, man, that's a curse word. You can say the word ass and they'll be like, man, you cursed. But when we look at the etymology and the definition of the word ass, it's not putting a curse on somebody when you say when you say to somebody damn you and i and and all of this behind the scenes witchcraft that people don't even know they're participating in now you're dealing with curses when you look at deuteronomy 28 the blessings for obedience and the curses for disobedience go look at how long the curses are but these people will warp your mind due to uh word association deception and you hear somebody say something that's actually uh, a biblical word 
you know, that has a different meaning, but especially in Western culture, man, your mind is so warped that you don't even realize it. The minute you hear somebody say ass, you've been brought up so religious that you're like, oh man, they curse it. And there's a difference between profane language, between swearing and what people call cursing. People don't understand it. They hear you speaking in a certain vigor and automatically they try to charge, you know, uh, stuff is sin. Here's another one, uh, word association. You have people that read about adultery in the Bible, but then they want everybody to be operating off of the word cheating. Those two don't have any link, anything together, but you say, well, I, I divorced my husband and I thought my husband was a Christian man and he cheated on me. They never come from a place of concreteness. And this is why the word says, study to show yourself approved. People will deceive you. And oftentimes the one doing the translating, the ones translating the scribes are the biggest deceivers. And without the Holy Spirit, without the spirit that gives understanding, the Ruach HaKodesh, you're not gonna be able to see it. Closer to Yah Ministries, kicking that thing, gun barrel straight. Wow.